I don't know. But I'm okay with that. Calling the Columbia County Board of Commissioners December 19th, 2023 meeting to order. Ask Commissioner Skinner if you'll open us with an invocation. Yes, sir. Uh, let us bow. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Father, in this Christmas season, we ask that uh, you help us to remember the true reason our Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that you be with us for the remainder of this meeting. Help us to have wisdom to make the right decision. I pray these things in your precious name. Amen. Please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> pledge, of pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Republic for which it stands. God, visible, justice for all. Let the record show we have a full Forum of Commissioners. Commissioners, you have the minutes from the December 5th meeting in your packet. If you've had a chance to review them, I'll accept the motion to do so. I'd like to make a motion to accept um, the minutes as presented. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. I want to welcome everyone here in this Christmas season and probably the most important person here tonight is the young man who's a Boy Scout in the back. And I want you to please stand <coughs> up, young man. Give us your name, school, and tell us why you're here. <laughs> Delegation, he's got leadership skills. <laughs> Very good. Welcome. What? Glad you're here, son. Um. <clears throat> Commissioners, you have the consent agenda in front of you. The item on this agenda has been through the necessary <coughs> committee and received the necessary votes to be placed on the consent agenda. So if they still meet with your approval, I'll accept one motion, motion to approve them all. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to accept the consent agenda items as presented. Second. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. On to new business. Commissioner Malir, you have our first item. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 23-65, um, requesting that the Columbia County Public Facilities Authority issue its revenue bonds. Second. Uh, thank you. This item is a request from the Board of Commissioners requesting the Public Facilities Authority to issue bonds on its behalf. Um, you'll see in the uh, backup information that uh, you're authorizing 
the public facility authority, or asking the public facility authority to issue up to $80 million of revenue bonds. These will be paid back with future SPLOS proceeds, so this is not uh, like a general obligation bond where property tax dollars are used. Um, it will be totally paid back with SPLOS revenue. Uh, and the, the projects that qualify are Tier 1 and countywide projects, and all the Tier 1 and countywide projects that qualify are attached to this list, but the Board of Commissioners in, a, in another series of, of independent meetings have narrowed that list down. So when we make the application to the PFA, it will be the list that the Board has come up with that will equal uh, up to not to exceed the $80 million. Questions, comments? Yeah, that's right. I, I failed to mention, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair, that, that we will be, uh, once we do this bond deal, we will actually be um, depositing our funds at a higher interest rate than we're borrowing funds. So as we pay that back, there will be a difference between those two, which will be a positive difference to us. That money will be used to fund additional projects or fund, fund any shortfalls in those projects. I'd like to also make the comment there had been a little bit of media coverage that may have confused some of my constituents thought we were going to use this to purchase fire trucks. And I wanted to make it clear that this is the public facilities authority and these are for public facilities only, only the buildings, there'll be no uh, vehicles or trucks. Right. And also no transportation. That no was transportation. also a question. There's no transportation in, included in this. Any other questions or comments? There's a motion and a second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. We're on to you, Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, this is file RZ231201. I make a motion to approve the request for a rezoning from HUD to RA, property located at tax map 029, <coughs> parcel 0371. Second. Currently, this parcel is part of the Greenpoint PUD listed here. It uh, will be coming out of the PUD if approved and rezoned back to RA and joined with this parcel here. <coughs> Downgrade from a PUD to RA. Questions? Motion is second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Uh, next, we have file RZ231202. I make a motion to allow the applicant to withdraw without prejudice. RZ231202. Second. This uh, was a request to do, rezone this property for a shopping center, about 57,000 square feet, plus two additional out parcels. There's an accompanying variance, but as you did here, uh, have you, as you have heard the motion, the applicant has requested to withdraw the request. And a couple of people have requested <laughs> to speak, so I'm just making it clear that the applicant has. Uh, withdrawing the request so for now it goes away basically questions comments uh, motion is second on the floor all in favor raise your right hand motion carries next is a uh, file VA 231204 which goes along with the previous file this is a variance request I make a motion to allow applicant to withdraw without prejudice file VA 231204 second Again, this was a variance. Uh, if the project were to go through, there was a driveway through a buffer. They were going to have to request a variance to allow that driveway to remain, but it's not needed at this time. Any other questions? Motion is second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. <coughs> Carries. Next, Mr. Chair, is file RZ231203. Uh, I make a motion to approve the request for a rezoning from R2 to P1 with a conditional use for massage for property located at tax map 037D, parcel 029, subject to the condition enumerated in the December 7th, 2023 Planning Commission report. Second. The applicant has requested a uh, proposed medical spa with massage services and an indoor gym uh, made available to her by a change of zoning. Um, the health department has looked at it. There's a septic system that will have to be verified because change in use. Um, there's a condition here that says any addition to the accessory structure here has some overhead doors. If they make changes to this building, those overhead doors will have to go away. Um, 
There will be a closure. Right now there's a, a circular driveway in this area that will be uh, closed. New access will be down through this area, parking lot located here. Parking lot will be used for both the main building as well as the accessory structure. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have about this one. Correct. Correct. There's a, a variance that will go along with this as well if you do approve this rezone. Any other questions? I do have a question. I believe when he um, read the motion, he said tax map 0370. I believe it might be 073D. Got to be picky, but I want to be sure we get it on the record correctly. The clerk says it's correct. Motion. Yes. There's a motion and second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. On this next item, I know there's some folks who have asked to speak. Do have a variant for this? Oh, one. do a variant? Where? Yeah. Oh, well, let's keep, <clears throat> keep going then. Yeah. Uh, this is file VA231207. I make a motion to approve the request for a variance to section 90 98, list of lot and structural requirements. Property located at tax map 073D, parcel 029, to reduce the front building setback to 60 feet from the center of North Bel Air Road and 50 feet from the center line of Bel Air Drive. Second. The existing structures do not meet current setbacks. As you're well aware, Bel Air Road has changed a lot since it was first built. Re Did you say 60 feet or 80 feet? 60. It's 60. 80. My bad. Very good. <laughs> Left my glasses. <laughs> now you tell us. Uh, yeah. So yeah. The current structures do not meet current setback requirements. 125 from Bel Air Road, 55 from uh, Bel Air Drive. Bel Air Drive will reduce to 50 to allow the current accessory structure to remain, and the Bel Air Road will, re will be reduced to 80 foot to allow the existing primary structure to remain. Any other questions? Any other corrections? No. Motion second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. That motion carries. <coughs> now can we go to the next one? Are there are people who asked to speak at this next, uh, on this next item. I'm, uh, let's see, Mrs. Um, Patty Hutto. Robert Russ. If you would please, sir, just state your name and address for the records. And you Robert Russ. I minutes. live at uh, 521 Roundtree Way. House right at the end of that project right there. And um, I'm concerned about the noise that's going to come along with this car wash they're pr proposing to be put there. And it's already a really congested area over there. We've got school buses that's going up around Tree Way. And it's my understanding that they're going to be, that's going to be where they enter the facility at. And uh, I'm looking forward to retirement soon. And I, I just hate to see my uh, retirement peace go away due to all the noise from this car wash. So uh, anyway, I asked them at the previous meeting, they would consider denying the rezoning. <coughs> and um, anyway, I'd appreciate it if they would. Yep. Okay. Since 1996. I'm the only one. Um, no, no, I had nobody's directly talked with me. I had some uh, what I considered frivolous offers placed in my mailbox or, or taped on my door. Well, I work rotating shifts, it's all day in a chemical plant. My hours are kind of strange, but nobody's talked with me directly about purchasing 
property now. Had something not wish to sell it. No, no, I never said that. Nobody's asked me about buying it other than the offers that I sent placed, like I said, in the mailbox and taped on the door. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Gary Simpson and Ray Carnes. Hi, how are you? I'm uh, Ray Carnes, uh, 811 Peninsula Court, Evans, Georgia. Um, I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to say a few words. Um, I'd like to just say a few things and address a few concerns and why I feel like this would be a really good fit for Columbia County and citizens of Columbia County. Um, first, we just set off with a simple mission statement of two main things that have been successful for me in the past, and that's one, uh, to have a really great product that we can be proud of, also dysfunctional and aesthetically pleasing. Uh, so we've done, we want to do that, and that's really resonated with uh, our customers over at Ray Ray's um, near the Costco, if any of you had the opportunity to see. Also, um, a customer service um, in that what we call old school customer service. To talk about our product that what we feel is going to be helpful to Columbia County, we really want to be good neighbors. I appreciate Mr. Russ's concerns. We have invested in equipment that's incredibly quiet, uh, also equipment, and um, services that don't currently exist in Columbia County. Our car wash has what's a conveyor belt, magic carpet, if you will. The easiest way to describe it is it's a, like a belt that you would put groceries on in the grocery store, and that way we can accommodate dualies uh, and large work trucks that other car washes are, aren't able to. We have to kind of compete uh, because we're never going to have as many locations as the other car washes, so we kind of have to compete the product itself. We also, because of that carpet, uh, can do low-profile pro rims, tires that don't have to risk damage on the chain-type pulley system. Uh, so that's another benefit to the citizens. But with the new apartments in the area, we feel like, in our little way, we're helping keep Columbia County beautiful because those are really hard to... Uh, their car is clean because there's not a lot of access to uh, driveways and, and things of that nature. Plus, um, not to mention that we're going to be bringing jobs into Columbia County and tax revenue. Uh, that we think will be um, uh, helpful. Um, also, we have a touchless option in our car wash that's great for people that have wrapped cars or ceramic coatings that they can utilize as, as well. Um, as far as the no noise is concerned, I was at uh, Ray Ray's today. Uh, my daughter-in-law came through with my grandkids. I spoke to her next to the vacuum producer, the motor, if you will. Uh, it's whisper quiet. We are right beside it and having a conversation without talking it quieter than I am right now so whisper quiet if you will um, and the other noise from the car wash is in the tunnel we have the necessary buffers that Columbia County requires on both sides our intentions to help Columbia County in the future is to sell both ends after we complete the, the build that to help these other properties uh, continue growth in Columbia County um, we have the uh, of area that we could easily sell this by Mr. Uh, Russ's property as well as over by the court uh, that once the, the car wash is complete that we would gladly help any of the uh, uh, neighbors with that. We also put a letter of intent what he was speaking of uh, in his in his mailbox uh, regarding purchasing of Russ's property. Um, so uh, in short I just wanted to say um, the benefits is the revenue to Columbia County jobs we're bringing a service to Columbia County that we think will be very helpful, and we really want to be good neighbors and make a beautiful car wash. I, I hope, and I don't know if any of you have been able to go by the uh, wash that we have at, at Costco, but we really took paid a lot of attention to landscaping and things of that nature to make sure it was pleasing on the eye. So I appreciate your time. I hope you'll consider us. Sure. We still to my knowledge, our uh, realtor sent a letter of intent and it's an offer. Nobody has verbally talked to him property and because all of this time together a whole lot more people. So nobody actually talked to him. Uh, I don't think that he ever responded to the letter of intent. Uh, 
So uh, we haven't actually talked to them. We'd be glad to have that conversation. And like I said, for fair market value, we could easily, uh, Bo actually drew up some plans that, that that particular property could easily, with this 30 foot, 30 feet that we would give up, uh, be an office of some sort, a dentist office or who knows what, and have a parking lot, have room for a parking lot. So further development, I think it would only help uh, Columbia County. Questions? So, so Bo drew up this many <coughs> property that he has ever talked to this many people would like to do this. What y'all have drawn up, obviously. He could speak better about this part than I. Hey, I'm Gary Simpson, 334 Holly Oak. Um, Jordan Trotter sent the letter to Robert Russ. He sent a text message back to the realtor saying he'd been offered twice what we offered and you couldn't buy a tent in Columbia County for 250 grand. That was his response. Second go round now, he put this, sent the same letter of intent. He did not respond. He could have responded, but he did not. $250,000 offer again, response, which means he doesn't want to sell. I understand that. Now, um, what was your second question? The, the engineering. So Will Butler had concerns that the properties would not be usable on either side because they'd be chopped up. So Bo went back, drew the 30 foot buffer, us selling it at fair market value, back to that property. There's a drawing that is submitted that shows these uh, buffers. Also, how many buffers did he It's the standard 30-foot buffer that we're doing for Columbia County. On Robert Russ's side, we would be willing to sell it back to him. Parking in there. I don't think there is. <clears throat> There's the drawing that was submitted. There's another drawing on top of this that it draws a straight line across here that we would sell that back towards Mike Zapata's house. 30 foot buffer that lies on the dotted line. Sell that back over to Robert Russ or whoever obtains his property. And Bo has a building drawn on Robert Russ's land and a detention pond with a driveway behind what is now his house and a parking lot with parking. And the county has the drawing. Yeah, fair market value. We don't need it. It'll never do us any good. Other questions? Any other questions? It, the other side over here, is there someone interested in that piece of property? Did you... That. So along in here, there is a guardrail. There's two properties. There are contracts on those two properties. Which Mike Zapata's house sits here, okay. which is a rental property of his. He has an offer. I don't know if it's gone to contract yet from the same individual that has the contract on the two properties at the guardrail who wants to develop the whole corner. And would most likely want to buy this lot from us, but we've not been approached. Nothing's been spoken of yet. But yes, there is interest right now to develop this corner. And we'd be glad to help if we need to. Yeah, we're not going to want a million dollars for it. Just fair market value, whatever it is. It's to us once we build. Well, on the screen is the one you're referring to now. Yeah. This is the drawing from Bo that has the line over on. We have that? It's on your screen. It's on the screen. It is. So there's, a, there's a straight line that comes down right here, comes straight on down, and that's us selling off the parcel to the left. Right there, back to the left. And then on Robert Russ's side, there's a straight line. I'm going to draw on the pond, but just beyond the pond towards his house is a straight line. 
That's the 30-foot buffer we would sell back to him. That shows the building on Robert Russ's land with parking behind it. I believe it's a 3,000-square-foot building. It would be larger with a detention pond. And that's just a possibility that Bo drew because it was everyone's belief that it would be useless. And uh, he drew that just to appease everyone and say, hey, it, it's very possible it could be a state farm, a dental office. There's quite a few things that could be in the future, but Robert Russ doesn't want to sell. So right now it's just going to be his house. Are well, there trees all in there? There is a tree line behind Robert Russ's house. He has a privacy fence. We do not intend to touch any of that tree line. All the trees will be left. All the trees behind his privacy fence will be left. Absolutely. Well, he had the letter of intent. He could have replied. Can Mr. Russ, I'd like to ask you. Mind coming back, <coughs> sir? Mr. Russ? Hi, Mr. S. I had a question. Okay. So you mentioned that you had uh, frivolous offers in your mailbox, but were those from uh, representatives of the two gentlemen here with us? It was from Jordan Trotter, uh, Ryan Martin, the offer that I seen in there. Mm -hmm. I did send him a text and tell him that with the real estate price, what I meant was the real estate prices, day and time. You know what they're offering me. You know I'm not interested in contributing to their. Uh, venture mm -hmm. right I'm looking forward to retirement so um, would I sell my house yes I'll sell it for the right price but I'm not gonna sell it and incur cost of moving and and to have to go and buy something less than what I have now because my house is convenient for everything as you can see. okay thank you but why would I want to give my residents up you know just because they want to put a car wash there you know, would I sell it? I'd absolutely sell it for the right price. But I'm not going to sell it for $250,000. I'd be a fool to do that. Okay. I just wanted to confirm that you did receive communication. From In the mail, but nobody talked to me. Nobody come to my house and talked to me. I did. I had something taped to my door one time. Then I had that put in my mailbox. Okay. As far as this letter that he's talking about, I don't know where, he, where that's at. I didn't receive. What I received was an offer in the mail. I did receive that letter. Okay, thank yep. you very much. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other questions? Just to add, we have no intentions of making any moves. It's going to be very quiet. I believe that he'll see that we're really good. You have the cleanest car on Riverwatch. Take care. Any other questions, comments, or motions? <clears throat> Uh, I make a motion uh, to approve the request for a rezoning from R2 to CC for property located at tax map 077A, 060A, 060, 060C, 061, 172, 171, 170, and 166. Second. Other yeah, questions, debate, comments? Motion second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have a variance. Speakers for this round. Uh, file uh, VA 231205. I make a motion to approve the variance to section 90 147 H4B use provisions and 90 147 I3 use provisions for property located at tax map 077A parcel. 060A, 060, 060C, 061, 172, 171, 170, 166 to allow operation of a car wash within 50 feet of a residential use and allow a drive through. Second. Sir, <clears throat> excuse me. County code does not allow a car wash to be within 50 feet of a residential property. That means there has to be some separation that's not a residential use. Between a house, and a car wash. In this case, we don't have that. We have the residential use. You have the car wash use. There is no 50-foot separation. There's also a requirement for a 50-foot separation between a residence and a drive-through. Probably doesn't hit what people think as a drive-through, but in this case, you're in a car. You are 
driving through a building to have a service. So request for the variances is to variance to waive the 50 foot separation requirement for a car wash and also waive a 50 foot requirement for the drive through. Any other questions? Motion is second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Next, we have file RZ231205. I make a motion to approve the request for a major PRD revision for property located at tax map <coughs> 078, parcel 048F, to add duplexes to the development and previous parking spaces and reduce the buffer width to 15 feet and reduce select side setbacks per the narrative subject to the conditions enumerated in the December 7, 2023 Planning Commission report. Second. A lot to unpack here. So this, uh, this has been on the ground for a while. The final plat for this neighborhood has been approved, uh, approved with 30 lots. Zoning allowed up to 35 lots, five under what they are allowed by zoning. They're asking to split five of the lots, get back to the 35 number. Um, they're also asking for the addition of two family residents in the development, uh, a reduction of the minimum lot size, addition of pervious paving parking spaces, and a reduction in the buffer width reduction in si select side setbacks related to uh, accessory structures. Uh, basically what it boils down to is move forward. I'm trying to find one that is easy to move forward. The five lots you see that with the stars subdivided into two individual lots on setbacks will be a seven and a half foot setback on the open side of the lot zero side, uh, zero setback on the line <laughs> lot, which will allow a two family residence to be built. Like okay, a townhome. So townhome, duplex. It'll, it'll look like the other houses in the neighborhood. However, it'll have two residences on their own lot. It can be sold individually. They're attached though. They're attached, but they're on their own lot. So think, think of a townhome. Right. The other uh, request is to put these five lots shown here. That gets them back to 35 lots. They're also asking to reduce the buffer, the 25-foot buffer on this side over here, down to 15 to allow them 10-foot for pervious parking. Uh, there's alleys around the rear of this development. It will allow them to put some uh, parallel parking along those alleys to allow residents other place to park. Their fear is that they're going to park in the buffer. they got to find somewhere to park. They'll park where they can. This will designate some area for them to park. Um, Reduction of the minimum lot size. When we split these four, I'm sorry, these five lots here. The minimum lot size will be 2,500 for those lots. Um, a lot, lot to unpack here. Uh, talk about the side setbacks. Hatch garages, the five foot setback for uh, accessory structures. They're looking to build the either garage or carport in the rear of these homes along the alleys. They're asking to move those over to five foot off the property line to allow them more flexibility, uh, picking location for the building to allow cars a better opportunity to park in their driveway. Small lots, uh, alleys in the rear, so it's going to be critical that they lay this out properly. You're going to have vehicles that can't get in and out of their parking lot or their driveways, excuse me. They're asking for a five foot setback for just those structures, not the actual primary uh, living structure. And the buffer, we talk, I think I've, I've covered them all. Buffer reduction, side setback reduction for ancillary, or for the accessory structures, seven and a half foot setback on one side, zero foot setback on the other for the uh, lots with the family units. I think I got, that was a lot. So we end up, after this said done, with 10 additional lots. Five additional lots. Taking those five and splitting them, so, split those five them, so are, that's yeah. ten lots, right? So five are already there. Go ahead. We're adding five more. So five turns into ten, yeah. and ten residences. So they're attached, right? Yeah. How tight is it in there? I don't. Obviously, it's a bit back. But from from the road standpoint, are they wide enough to handle all this? This so tight. 
it, it's a tight neighborhood. Um, it was it's all private roads, uh, on street parking. We don't we don't have a lot of on street parking on on county roads. They did on street parking here with private roads. The alleys are are very tight. We've had staff out there driving. I've driven them. Um, tightness is why they're asking for some of these variances to allow them to kind of spread out a little bit. This is a new owner. Uh, previous owner built it, purchased the property. Now they're trying to make some minor adjustments to it. To get what he thinks a better product. Somebody has a big step. Can they get by? It's it's going to be tough. Um, so can we write into this that if the fire department is required to go through and bulldoze cars, that it's on the HOA to replace them? I believe Mr. Crawford is here. Would you like to speak to that? I mean, if it's too tight and somebody's house is on fire, people are going to lose cars and we're not going to pay for them. Parking lot. They assured me if it's on fire, cars in the way, they're going through. So just saying. Jonathan Crawford, 884 Willow Lake, Evans, Georgia, 30809. So everything, yeah, um, with regards to, you know, it, they are private roads. You know, we inherited this and in trying to make improvements um, to that regard. We've done more engineering and more design work on this just because it is a unique site, given how um, small site it, we're, we're dealing with existing infrastructure. We've been working with staff closely to really do a plot plan for every single lot. So we've actually fully designed every single footprint on every lot. And to take into account for some of these larger vehicles, we've gone away from detached garages for some of the units to have more of a parking pad. That was one of the iterations that we evolved over the last two to three months where we removed, because staff actually went out there, did some turn radiuses. We've been working with our architect, um, showing him the exact same thing. So. It's been very thoughtful, done more on the front end, like I said. I mean, we've essentially fully engineered this to try to accommodate um, some of these design challenges because it is a tight site. Um, from an aesthetic, uh, you know, I know you mentioned duplex, but I think per the ordinance, it's just a, a two-family dwelling. That was one of the, um, we tried to work within the existing plant, but I do think it's a better plan for both parties overall, um, subdividing these center parcels and having it be simple lots, you know, originally we didn't do that just because we were trying to work within the existing approved plat, but we've gone ahead, gone back and revised that. And we just think from the streetscape standpoint, you know, it offers two sides. These four lots are isolated in the center island. You really get two forward facing um, sides to this building, which um, from an aesthetic and a streetscape, and then the other lot to the right is the largest lot because it's in that corner, it's almost double all the other lots there. So. Logically, it made sense to, to place the units there. And like I said, from overall density, this development was approved for 35 units. We're asking to simply keep it, keeping it at that 35 units. Um, I know there are a number of conditions tied to it where we'll come back to staff and just make sure before we get final approval on the plans that we've checked all the boxes, which we're working on. We've done a lot of work here. And the buffer was just, um, I'll speak to the buffer real quickly. You know, originally it was a 15-foot buffer. It was approved when they went back and revised several years ago. It was increased to a 25-foot buffer. But what's approved as platted currently, there's really a 10-foot la landscaping strip that's significantly under landscaped. Uh, that's one of the first things we, we look to tackle and make that a true 15-foot buffer. But we also noticed that offside, on the outside of that alley, it's, you know, a layer, about a five-foot layer of crusher run that people ultimately are going to park on to why not, you know, tackle some of these issues on the front end that we've done with a lot of our developments that we see are problems. People park where they want to park. So we saw that as a way to put a pervious parking area that could be part of the, it's a functional design, you know, we're trying to do the best with what we've got because we just know over time there are going to be ruts, there's going to be a maintenance issue, and we want this to be something aesthetically that looks good long term. Duplex, but yeah. I was going to look at it, called it out. Yeah. 
it is a unique product type. I mean, I'd look, I'd say around ballpark to 30 foot in width. I, I know we've actually engaged an architect out of Knoxville, Tennessee to specifically design all of these units because it was a product type that, you know, is unique to, to what we're inheriting here. So other lots are 30 in width. The other lots are 50, 50 and 55 foot lots. Well, you have seven and a half foot. Well, you depends on the, on the 55 foot lots, we have 10 foot setbacks on the 50 foot lots we have seven and a half so you got a 55 foot lot you got 35 foot width of house <coughs> yeah correct so when you when you do the duplex here if you do a if you do a friend there was it was a 60 foot lot cut it in half so now you have a 30 foot lot zero setback on one side and the seven and a half seven on the other so you have 22 and a half feet per side so your building as a whole could be 45 foot wide. Counting yeah. tiles. <laughs> so the, the building as a whole could be 45 <coughs> foot wide, whereas the other lots are going to be 35 foot wide, 40 foot wide. So these will be fee two divided up to be two fee simple lots, two separate lots, That's which we more conducive to home ownership, owner occupancy. Which I appreciate you going, going the extra mile to do that. Um, and your HOA will 100% um, be aware that these are private roads. And, you know, I, I, the hard part is when something gets built that's a little, maybe a little skinny, a little hard to deal with, you know, after it's built out and you're long gone, those residents come back to us complaining because we allowed you to build something that was now difficult for them to maneuver in their vehicles or cars, or, or they feel like it was too small or too tight. Um, and then on top of that, when it comes time to um, maintain these roads and their private roads, not county roads, then we also see a lot of those neighborhoods come back to us and say, well, why did you let them build it not to county standards? Because they can't, they can't deed it over to us for us to maintain because they won't deed it to county standards. Um, can you guarantee us that the HOA will, will uh, the, the documents will be drawn up and set up in a way that that they'll be successful long term and not be a surprise to the people who move in and 10 years down the road they're freaking out and calling us because they feel like they didn't understand right no i understand completely i, I think we take a lot of pride we have in-house counsel and we spend up you know i think proofs in the pudding with a number of the other developments we've done in this county that we really do have a strong hoa on the front end so we would do nothing less than that here I think from just an infrastructure standpoint, um, you know, we always want to set, we take a lot of, a lot of thought goes into our developments. And I just used an example. We have people, you know, ask about putting pools in our amenities and we, we have a threshold. If we can't get over 200 lots, it's, it's a burden to the residents to maintain a pool. They don't understand what goes into that. So no different here. One of the main things that we would like to provide, I mean, I know the county was excited when they saw that we were coming in to take over this development because we took it to a, we always say we're no we're no better than our last development, you know, and we, and we mean that. And for these roads and the infrastructure, it's already failing. The alleys are failing. Um, these are private roads. You know, once a lot of the heavy equipment hasn't even gotten in there. So our plans are fully to actually do all the vertical construction, then come back and um, fill the roads, um, repurpose them, and then come in and overlay. So they'll actually be the nicest roads, you know, of any development that we've turned over when we're all said and done with it should set them on a good foundation, you know, for long term. Um, we've done the same with street lights. The prior developer had no plan to put street lights in, in, in this development. Um, the ordinance was just recently rewritten to allow private, you know, street lights to go into these private developments. We've already cut a check to get those installed. So these are improvements that we're taking on the front end that we think, you know, you know, I think it adds value long term, but also it just makes a better community that people will be proud of. Make sure that it's presented second owner or third owner. Hey, that can be as long as it's clear in the HOA documents, then that's higher to the right. credit. Who reads everything they sign when you buy a house? When you're doing the closing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm that person. But you know that that's a good question. Um, Mr. Crawford, what is your relationship with Jones Creek HOA? Are they pleased with the buffers and all the progress that's being made, or are they? Yeah, so I spoke with Trip Nanning, which is the president of the Jones Creek. He was excited just to see that we were taking over, you know, the problems they've had with runoff um, during the construction. So we'll make sure to alleviate those concerns. He has my cell phone. I has, have his, you know, so there's a direct line of communication. No major complaints. I think we had several residents that lived in this back left. I, sorry, I can't think of the name. But our initial planning commission, I was able to address those concerns, and then we were back to planning commission. That's correct. So to the northeast quadrant, you know, everything, just given the topo of the side, <laughs> it drains across, I don't know if that's Jones Creek, the states, then it goes into there's a pond so there was you know I know during construction while it's an open site I live in Jones Creek so um, I'm very familiar I drive through there and, and so turns hopefully everything's stabilized you know but that's something we'll take but the perimeter like I said we will be supplementing not disturbing at this point any more questions Thank you. For debate, I believe there's a motion and second already on the floor. Favor raise your right hand. Motion carried. Uh, uh, next is file VA 231201. I make a motion to approve the request for a variance to section 90 <coughs> 147 D 10 B. Use provisions for property located at tax map 068, parcel 019C, to expand the permitted hours of operation for the existing gas station to 4 a.m. to 11 p.m. Second. County code requires operation of a gas station to be from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., so this variance would allow them to open two hours earlier to provide services to morning crowds. Questions? Motion is second. Or on favor. Next is uh, file VA 231202. I make a motion to approve the request for a variance to section 90 144 placement of buildings and structures in an easement encroachment agreement, property located at tax map 060, parcel 693, to reduce building setbacks to one foot off the southern property line, two foot off the western property line for accessory structure subject to the conditions enumerated in the December 7th, 2023 Planning Commission report. Second. Applicant is requesting this variance to build a 12 by 13 shed. The shed construction was started when uh, they realized their error. They actually actually deconstructed part of the shed, uh, applied for the variance. They do pick this, they pick this location due to some uh, French drains and some drainage issues they're having. Neighbors are in support of this variance as well as the HOA. They've documented that. Questions? Motion is second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Yes, sir. I'll make a motion to approve first reading of resolution 23 57 <coughs> SD 023.551 permit to place and Second. Two, a developer requests a tree light district under our new policy. I uh, think it's working well. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. No, there are no legal matters, right, Mr. Jordan? No new legal matters, Chairman. None that, none that you're aware of, or neither am I, so it's a safe to say yes. <laughs> No request for a view by committee. Any public comments? Uh, executive session, I believe we have four issues we can deal with right here and now. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I have a, uh, a motion regarding 
Personnel, I make a motion to approve the contract with Michael Blanchard, Stacey Gordon, John Luton, Leanne Reese, Paul Scarberry, Scott Sterling, Robert K. Titus, Jeremy Wallen, James Pascal, and Jana Beth Wells. Second. These are just annual renewals of these contracts uh, that, that are set to expire December 31st and renew. They'll be renewed January 1st, 2024, and they'll go to December 31st, 2025. These are members of our executive leadership team that are all on contract. No changes to any of the salaries that you see. The salaries are all fixed. No, no other changes to the contracts. Just, just the term. Motion second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. <clears throat> Make a motion to approve thirty-seven thousand two hundred dollars parcel zero seven C sixty thousand dollars to parcel zero owned by Farmington property owner thousand dollars to. Hundred dollars to Jennifer and Mike. Right of way in our easement. Widening property. Second. Three low re, uh, sorry, three acquisitions. This will get us up to twenty five percent on that project. So <clears throat> a long way to go. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Carries. Make a motion to approve thirty four thousand six. Ninety-seven dollars to Slim and Parker Rapella S. Samaria, parcel zero seven two five three. Location assistance and rent. Second. Payments to tenants in parcels that we had to acquire. So just making these folks whole as we're moving them out of their homes. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. <coughs> Motion to approve seven thousand six hundred. Dollars to Warren Grove parcel zero six one K to obtain right of way on second. So one of our last ones, if we get this one closed, we have one left to do, and that right of way project will be done. The product's already under construction, but we still have to negotiate with one last owner. Any questions? All favor raise your right hand. Motion carries. There's only one more motion. Uh, make a motion to adjourn. All in favor, raise your right hand. We're adjourned. <laughs>